7 Days to Die is going gold version 1.0. The completed game is finally going to come out on PC and console. Oh, wait, is it? With more than a decade of development, 7 Days has accomplished more than our team or critics could have ever imagined. After nearly 12 years, many consider 7 Days to be the crown jewel of survival games on the market today. We've seen our game and audience grow and evolve over the years. It's been shown at trade shows and had countless early access releases. We've had a few speed bumps along the way, but we think the team, community, and game are ready for the next steps. What does version 1.0 and Going Gold really mean? Let's leave aside that it no longer means that it's an actual burning of a CD Gold Master, blah blah blah, and rather use the nowadays more common terminology that the game has been completed and is ready for sale. Alpha 22 will come with bandits and will be a short cycle after Alpha 21. So it was declared by the Fumpims when we found out Alpha 21 would not have bandits. Fair enough. A short cycle with bandits turned into a year long cycle with no bandits. Alright, Alpha 23 then. Some last kinks to work out, we understand. But internally, our plan has always been for Alpha 22 to be version 1. W wait, hold on. Alpha 22 was always going to be 1.0? But bandits were always intended for when you go 1.0. When are they coming now? Oh, Q2 2025, so not 1.0. Not even the next update 2.0, so it's 3.0, equivalent to Alpha 24. What about the story, Steam Workshop? Oh. It was also supposed to be in when the game goes gold, but nope, Q4 2025, so Alpha 25. Remember, the dates are rough estimates and subject to a change, so using the Fumpim time, let's double it at least every schedule, so not 6 months but 12 months per update, meaning Bandits 2026 with Story in 2027. In my view, Going Gold, a 1.0 release should be a complete game. It doesn't need to have expansions or DLC, even though some games go that route to get more money, but at least it should be a complete game. Just for the fun of it, I went to look at the old 7 Days to Die Kickstarter page. Lo and behold, finished game was estimated for delivery 2014. Yes, that's not a typo. 2014, not 2024. So is Bandit's story really needed for a 1.0 release? This is where we'll all have to agree to disagree. Some, like the fun pimps and community members, feel that the Bandit's and story is not really needed for release. Some would actually like the Bandit's to be canned entirely. Some don't care about the story. My view would be that yes, a story in Bandit's as part of that story really should have been in before launching 1.0 and calling it a complete release. But here is the big but. It actually does not really matter. I strongly feel that we should not get hung up on version labeling. Whether you call it 3.0 for Bandits or Alpha 25, what matter is what features are getting launched and the timeline for them coming out. So focusing on the important bit, let's review again. Alpha 22, 1.0 features are still a go. This should be coming in June, with soon thereafter July launch for console. So this summer still looks good from the go ahead plan to launch across PC and console. The next update is planned for the end of the year with weather and biome updates, wardrobe system, maybe to allow us to better manage our outfits and mods, maybe cosmetics. We'll hopefully get the crossplay enabled on console and PC and other features such as random gen and there's a mention of more zombie stages, spawn capabilities, twitch drops, outfit DLC and more. Back in 2013, they said they preferred to do cosmetic only, so I do hope that the DLC outfits are cosmetic. If they contain game features and bonuses, that will piss a bunch of people off. It will also potentially cause issues for modders, as suddenly part of the game needs to be sort of cordoned off for modification, else we'll just mod it in for free. We do have a Q2 2025 update as well with our bandits, UI overhaul, the event system and new quest type. And then finally, Q4 2025. See the pattern? Sixth month updates? If past performance is the more accurate predictor of future performance, we probably should assume that it's 12 months per update, meaning yeah, anyway, we'll get our trader overhaul, story mode, Steam Workshop and a new quest type eventually. 
I expect there will be a continued flow of new art updates, decorations, new PIs, zombie and character model updates and the like, and a host of other things that are just too small or premature to put on the roadmap so far. Storm in a teacup. Yes, we did not get the finished game in 2014 as estimated, we're not really even getting it in 2024. It's likely to be 2025 to 2027 or beyond, but so what? I would have to say that what we have in 2024 is a far better game than anyone could have envisioned back in 2013. And sure, it's taken a lot longer, but it's gotten us an awesome game over the last decade with many versions to try out and have fun with. I'm going to take this time to thank the Fumpins for their dedication to our favorite zombie game and for sticking with it all this time and into the future, and I wish them a strong 1.0 launch this summer. If you're curious about more details of the 1.0 release and the implications, catch my next video. And the best way to do that is of course, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you next time, Survivor!